In this, we'll be taking up the second homework sheet for the reciprocal of quadratic functions. And for all these questions, the very first thing I do is I ask myself, which scenario do I have? Do I have one vertical asymptote, two vertical asymptotes, or no vertical asymptotes? And I can easily answer that question by studying the, the quadratic of, in the denominator. And if you find a discriminant, you can actually tell yourself which scenario you have. If the discriminant is positive, that means you have two vertical asymptotes. If it's equal to zero, you have one vertical asymptote. And if you have um, a discriminant which is negative, then you have no vertical asymptotes. Anyways, just uh, just really have um, a quick sketch of all three different scenarios in it. And that way it would really help when you actually have the graph. Uh, so, okay, let's do it. My strategy for all these are the same. Find intercepts, find the asymptotes, and then I can just piece together everything and then reverse engineer and come back to these um, like behavior in your vertical asymptote and behavior, I always come back to it. So I just realized I made a mistake here. Okay, all right. So, I have the asymptotes, I have um, the intercepts or the y-intercept, and then that pieces together everything. I have this middle branch here. Now this middle branch here, it will have a local max point here. Uh, I know it's halfway between these uh, vertical asymptotes, which means the x-coordinates gonna be negative three over two. And I did the math on the side here, and uh, the y-coordinates negative one quarter. So let me just write negative three over two, negative one quarter. That's the local max point. Um, you actually need that point because without that point, you cannot determine the range of this function. And you actually can't tell me where it's going to be increasing, where it's decreasing, because midway through, it goes from increasing to decreasing. And uh, without this x coordinate, you can't determine which way over. Okay, uh, this one over here, in halfway between negative one and five is two. And I did the math, when x is 2, the rational function is equal to 1 over 9. So f of 2 is 1 over 9, which means the local min point is 2, 1 over 9. All right, so I'll let you look over the solutions here. Hopefully I didn't make a careless mistake. Okay. So once I have the graphs, I reverse engineer, I fill in the whole table. All right. Uh, that's not to say you can fill in the table first. Just say that it's not to say you can't fill in the table first, but it's significantly easier if you just get the graph first and then fill in the table. Okay, all right. We'll do one more. So for C, you have the single vertical asymptote scenario, and for D, you actually have no vertical asymptote. All right, how did I know D had no vertical asymptote? I saw for the discriminant. Uh, so I won't jump ahead of myself, let's just do C first. So I factor uh, x plus 3 all squared, beautiful. Uh, I have one vertical asymptote, which is an x equal to 3. Plot the y-intercept, must be approaching pause infinity because I have no, I have no x-intercept, I cannot go down towards negative infinity. And if you study the function over x plus 3 all squared, it's strictly positive, except at negative 3, where it's undefined. But aside from that, the function is positive, 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 positive. So really link the algebra with the graph. It makes no sense if you, if you went down to negative infinity. Negative infinity. OK, let's go back up. I'll show you the table again. So x intercept, y intercept, asymptote. I start off with that. And then I generate the graph. and I filled in this cell, the behavior near the vertical asymptote. I filled in the end behavior. I know the horizontal asymptote. Uh, I can use a graph to generate domain, range, increase, decrease, where it's positive, where it's negative. Uh, one more time, the horizontal asymptote is always y equals zero, if you're talking about the reciprocal, reciprocal of a quadratic function. But later on, see, it's not always the case. All right, last one. So I don't know what you remember from uh, grade 10 quadratics, but you have a mission here. You have to find the vertex of this quadratic function. Okay, you have to find the vertex because that's where the 
the top of the hill is going to be. So I remember from grade 10, the negative V over 2A shortcut. If you don't remember it, that's okay, no problem. Go ahead and complete the square. Um, you, you need some technique to help you find it. Okay, You can even go partial factor from grade 11. Uh, but I definitely did negative V over 2A, which is a very quick shortcut. That'll give me the x coordinate of the vertex. The x coordinate of the vertex is negative 1 half. Uh, f of negative half is negative 4 over 19. So... I know, so I know that the local, sorry, the global minimum point will be negative 4 over 19 because this is an open down parabola. Oops. So I know the vertex occurs at negative 1 half. I know the vertex occurs at negative 1 half. That means the top of my hill, well, I guess I don't know if you want to say the bottom of the hill, but you know what I'm saying, that the, the, the peak okay, of the hill will be occurring at negative one half. So that's why I found f of negative one half. But first, I know where the x corner of the vertex is. Once I know where the x corner of the vertex is, I use that value and um, I find the output of, of the function, uh, of the rational function. All right, so x-intercept, none, y-intercept, no vertical asymptote, beautiful. That means I can't talk about the behavior near the vertical asymptote. I can still talk about end behavior, though. Uh, I know the horizontal asymptote, domain, range, increase, decrease, increase. Where is it positive? Where is it negative? All this, I got it from the graph. Okay, so, bam. I'm looking at this. Oh, it's because I have the y-intercept, y too. Yeah, so the y-intercept is negative one, 1 over 5, and the... Uh, the global minimum point is 4 over 19. So negative half, negative 4 over 19. This negative half, like I said, this is the x coordinate of the vertex. I need that, that number. Otherwise, I don't know how to draw this hill. Um, yeah, so I would argue this one is the trickiest because we don't talk about this scenario as often. Uh, so really give yourself a few reps. If you have a really hard time with this, um, ask a friend who has who's passed grade 10 math and to create a quadratic function with no real zeros and where its, y, where its vertex is not located on y-axis. Because for whatever reason, the textbook always loves to put the vertex on the y-axis. That makes it too easy. I can tell you most parabolas do not have its uh, vertex on the y-axis. So that means this hill, the peak of the hill, will not always be on the y-axis. Um, so yeah, uh, give yourself some examples and then take the reciprocal of that function and see if you can uh, graph that properly. And of course you can check using uh, graphing software.